back to midterms, they're just 10 days away, and some polling suggests that some black voters just aren't as pressed to get to the ballot box. And I don't need to tell you that as the backbone of the Democratic electorate, we are certainly not going to lay the failure of democracy at the feet of black folks, but low turnout among black voters could be catastrophic for America. Enter former President Barack Obama. He hit the campaign trail last night in the A, rallying with Georgia's gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams and incumbent Senator Reverend Raphael Warnock. Obama told the crowd to hit the polls and cautioned the easily fooled about voting for celebrities. Take a listen. Let's do a thought experiment. Let's say you're at the airport and you see Mr. Walker and you say, hey, there's Herschel Walker, Heisman winner. Let's have him fly the plane. <laughs> you probably wouldn't say that. You'd want to know does he know how to fly an airplane? Seems to me he's a celebrity who wants to be a politician. And we've seen how that goes. All right, joining me now, Dr. Jason Johnson, MSNBC political contributor. Wake up, Jason, MSNBC political contributor. And Cliff Albright, he's the co-founder of Black Voters Matter Fund. I'm very happy to have you guys with us. Jason, since I had to beg you to make time for us this morning, I'll start off with you um, and what this means for um, black voters. First of all, you and I talk about this all the time, this whole conversation around um, black voters. And in the articles that are written, there's always an emphasis on black men. So I'm first just curious about your thoughts on is the concern about low turnout among black voters legitimate? Because in the early numbers in Georgia, that does not seem to be a problem. No, it doesn't. It, it, Tiffany, it's a narrative that is created sometimes maliciously, sometimes out of ignorance, and sometimes out of myth. Maliciously, it sometimes is from national Democrats as a way to sort of gain things out in advance and find somebody to blame. Oh, it was black men's fault that these people weren't successful. Sometimes it's just a, it's just a rumor. It's just a myth. Oh, because Trump did well with some black men in 2016. But here are the facts on the ground. If you look at Georgia, uh, you look at early voting, African-American men have turned out at a higher rate than in 20, uh, 2018 and 2020. It is clearly not an issue in Georgia. I want to make that clear to everybody. Black men are voting for Stacey Abrams, so we can end and dead that myth on Twitter. But I think the larger issue here is the responsibility of Democratic or left-leaning organizations to talk to all constituents on a regular basis more than six weeks before the election. you got to build up these relationships because, as you see, while there may be higher turnout in Georgia, we're seeing it in Columbus, Ohio. Dayton and Cleveland, the numbers of majority black districts are way down, way, way down. And that will be very difficult for Tim Ryan to beat J.D. Vance if those numbers stay low. Now, maybe people are showing up on Election Day, but you've got to be out there on a regular basis, knocking on doors. You can't just use tweets. You can't just use commercials. You've got to communicate with people in order to get them to go out and vote because they are facing voter suppression. Yeah, and you know, that's the thing, because you bring up, like, Ohio, and the difference there is, of course, none of the people on the ballot look like the constituents they're saying need to turn out. And then when some of those candidates, I mean, look, I know they're trying to win, so they're trying to make inroads with all kinds of voters. But when you try to make inroads with people who call themselves swing voters, people who may have some empathy or sympathy towards the MAGA crowd, and the candidate is now talking their language, saying, hey, you know, I I'm here to appease you. And then when they talk to black voters, it's like, hey, I'll do some things for the black community. I just can't say it real loud. Um, that can also depress the, the African-American vote. So I just have a hard time putting the onus on black folks uh, when the landscape is not necessarily skewed to prioritize our interests. Cliff, I'm curious your thoughts. What do you make of this landscape? And are you concerned about the uh, turnout among black voters? Yeah, hey, Tiffany. Let me let me first double down and agree on everything that Jason said about Georgia and about black men in Georgia. We actually were in a, a whole Twitter exchange with a journalist from, from one of the major newspapers in, in the state of Georgia who was trying to downplay black male turnout. We had to point out to him that he was framing it in a way that was designed to drive the narrative that black men weren't coming out when all of the numbers suggest otherwise. In fact, the biggest increase in turnout that we've seen from 18 and 20 up until this year. The biggest increase, well, there's black men, even biggest increase, including black women, white men, white women, the biggest increase has been coming from black men. So I just want to agree with what, what Jason pointed out and also agree with them. This is two points I'm agree with Jason on. It wasn't one segment. <laughs> the other piece that he said is that you've got to have those conversations. 
there are different conversations, not as many conversations happening someplace like Ohio. And by the way, I'm in I'm in Texas right now in Dallas. I'll be in Columbus, Ohio, that Jason mentioned in like three days with the blackest bus in America on our We Won't Black Down tour. But there aren't as many conversations happening in the black community in Ohio because there hasn't been as much investment and support as compared to what you've right. seen someplace like Georgia. People have got to understand that what we saw happen in Georgia two years ago does not just happen by magic. It happens from organizing, which in turn takes investment. And so we haven't seen that investment in Ohio. In fact, we've seen a, a divestment from reaching out to black communities in places like Ohio, including in Florida, even in North Carolina, even though you've got an incredibly tight race there, but you have people that have ridden off those states written off those candidates and therefore have also written off talking to black voters. So the turnout is there in places where there's the support to do the organizing. But when the party or progressive funders or others don't invest in local infrastructure, credible messengers, then you can't see the kind of turnout that we need to see. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. Yeah. I have to say, you guys, uh, especially Jason, I watching President Obama speak, I felt nostalgic. You know, I mean, you take a look at the landscape now and watching him take that podium again. I mean, he and that's kind of the problem, right? I think a lot of people want uh, for them. President Obama was the floor and not the ceiling. You know, for people who grew up seeing him, uh, they may not appreciate what a special moment in time that was. Um, does he still have that same appeal to the voting electorate? Because he certainly does with me. And also, Jason, uh, Vice President. President Kamala Harris is also out there. Does she have any appeal with black voters? What do you say? I mean, I, I, of, of course Obama does. Of course Obama is, 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 he brings up nostalgia, he brings up excitement, he's still witty, he's still engaging. 7,000 people showed up to that rally in Georgia on Friday. 7,000 people. That is a small, small number. But I'll tell you this, Tiffany, and I, you know, I'm, I'm a professor at Morgan State University. I teach in the School of Global Journalism and Communications. I was talking to my students earlier this week. I have a large number of students, and I'm not critical of them when I say this, but I have a large number of students who are not yet registered to vote. Now, fortunately, we're in the state of Maryland, right? In the state of Maryland, it's very easy to early register. You can go downtown. There's things you can take care of. But what it said to me is that even in a really blue state where you have a black man who is very likely going to be elected governor, nobody had reached out to my students yet. Nobody had made that a reality for them to get registered to vote. Now, I'm going to get it handled, but that means the local Democratic Party organizers and activists didn't do it. So it's bigger than just having rallies. It's bigger than having celebrities come in and interview you. you got to do the day-in, day-out work. And I'm saying this because my students are too young to care about Obama. They were born in 03. He doesn't make them right. excited. So you got to do something else to keep these younger voters engaged. Uh, Cliff, what do you think? I mean, because like I said, Vice President Kamala Harris is on the trail. Does she uh, gender that same um, enthusiasm among black voters? Yeah, I mean, obviously there's a certain amount of enthusiasm that, that President Obama will create. People will still love to come out. I like to hear him speech. I think that his, his analysis of, of Walker and flying the plane was, was spot on, right? But here's the deal. That can't be a replacement for doing the hard work of organizing right. our communities, of talking to voters, of, of knocking on those doors, right? Having those conversations. You can't use somebody like Obama or, or Kamala Harris as, as, like, as like our magic Negro. That's going to help pull out all the black voters, right? Uh, President Obama can't be bagger van, right? The same thing yeah. mile. It takes work, it takes investment, and it takes supporting the groups that are on the ground doing that. That's not to say that he's not effective. He is. It just takes more than that or any individual to be a surrogate well, to hold a rally yeah. to do the deep, especially well, for folks that aren't already engaged in the process. Before we go, I just want to play very quickly this uh, Obama ad because, Jason, you telling that story made me think about um, the ad that Obama did that is kind of meant to talk to young people, but I kind of feel like it talks to us. Take a listen. For those of you who are just turning 18 and were only three or four when I was elected, my name is Barack Obama. I was the 44th president of the United States, and I have the best jump shot in White House history. Oh! I've heard a lot recently about how voting doesn't solve everything, and I can see why you might think that. It won't make Outer Banks or Euphoria Season 3 or Rihanna's new album drop any faster. It won't make sending gifts any less cool. Wait, gifts aren't cool anymore? Anyway, it won't even help you understand the most complicated questions in the universe. Like, why do I know so much about Pete Davidson's dating life? 
was a very clever ad. I thought it was great. And I'm gonna, but I'm going to tell you who would shut it down at Forever Flotus. If Michelle Obama hit that campaign trail, because the Republicans do not come, it's almost like they know better. Like there's just a line drawn where it's like, we do not go after Michelle Obama ever because you will arouse an army of folks who give the ultimate clap back. Jason, what do you think about the ad? Show it to your students, please. <laughs> it's funny. I'm actually, I was planning on showing it to my students next week. Here's the thing. It's great dad humor. Okay, it probably works for people our age and a little bit yeah. older. I'm telling you, like, my 19-year-old my students who were 12, 13 years old when Obama left office, he is important to them, but he is not a motivator, right? And even the way he was talking, it sounds like your dad. If you're trying to get people who are first-time voters, who don't necessarily have the fear of Trump, who don't necessarily have Barack Obama sort of burrowed into their brain as the most important person, you have to make them aware, especially in these sort of blue and purple states, that like, hey, your rights might be taken away, even if you have a Democratic governor. Yeah. Hey, student loans really mattered a lot to my students. Those are the kinds of issues that you have to focus on. Abstract concepts like saving democracy is not going to motivate them as much as what's going to happen to my pocketbook and what's going to happen to my body. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, we'll pick up this conversation on our IG Live after the show, Jason. Uh, thank you so much for obliging me and coming on the show uh, this week. I greatly appreciate it. Um, and thank you, as always, uh, Cliff Albright, not only for what you do for democracy, but for joining us uh, this Saturday morning.